Hey everybody, I'm Zelda Master, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Master Mode. Last time we made our way to Heijino Village and fixed the damages to Archika Slate, as well as we obtained the Hylian Shield. And well, in this video we're going to go ahead and report to Impa that Archika Slate is now fixed, and we have the, um, uh, you know, album photos that Zelda took 100 years ago, and now we can find the memories because of those album photos being restored onto the Sheikah Slate, and that's not necessarily what I wanted to do, like, look for the memories. I mean, it still will be exciting to listen to the Japanese voices, you know, in all the cutscenes and stuff, so I'm looking forward to that for sure, and I'll be sure to watch the majority of the cutscenes, but, um... What I'm more so looking forward to is the champion's tunic. I know I said I wasn't going to wear it as much because uh, I did in my previous playthrough and that's because I want to stay true to the game. But the champion's tunic overall is the best within the game and uh, I really want to look at the HP of enemies and overall see how much they regen when they do heal overall. Because yeah, in master mode things have changed and I think having the champion's tunic will uh, help us overall just see the HP we're dealing with and whatnot but yes yeah, so, so yeah this is without a doubt Zelda's uh, you know photos that she took 100 years ago as Impa is implying and we can easily find a lot of memories right off the bat I can kind of focus on memories, but I'm not gonna do that I'm kind of just gonna look for one and only one because we only need to find one so that we can um, Get the champions tunic and then from there I'll just kind of leave the rest and if we do really stumble upon any I might pick it up But all right, so captured memories has begun and we must begin capturing all the memories by finding them and I want to say the easiest one to get straight off the bat is uh, near the Lake Colomo. Uh, just right by it, like in front of the lake when you're staring off into the Nekluda region where you can see the two, uh, the Twin Peaks. Uh, you'll be able to find a memory where both Link and Zelda were, you know, relaxing there. And that's a memory I want to see overall because I want to hear Zelda's voice when she isn't in despair, you know, isn't crying out for Link's help, seeking out for, you know, Link to come save her. I'd rather just hear her voice when she's calm and relaxed before the calamity strikes. So I'm excited to hear that because I haven't heard it at all in Japanese. I mean, it's my first time replaying through the game um, in Japanese, you know, trying it out because the uh, voice pack wasn't available on release for the game but I mean I still enjoyed the English voice acting like I said my only issue was Zelda's um, I do hopefully want to try out other voice packs maybe in other playthroughs I mean I'm most likely gonna play this game a lot more so yeah probably after master mode I mean maybe if I play the game on my own another time I will definitely check out the other languages and just see how all the voice acting sounds I like how they included all the different languages that you can uh, listen between and overall um, the yeah, English and Japanese so far have been pretty good the only issue like I've mentioned is Zelda's voice in English but uh, let's hear it in Japanese right now as we can find the glowing mark right here yep I don't really even need to look at the map or anything I have all of the memories pretty memorized <laughs> within my head okay that was stupid I don't even know where I was aiming for I was supposed to be like a pun or something but all right let's go ahead and check out our Shiki slate and uh, learn a little bit more about what happened 100 years ago in this very spot What's funny and what someone pointed out is the fact that if you look at the photos and then you actually look at the view, nothing has changed in terms of the trees, the grass, everything. Like, everything stayed the same, and when you really look at it that way, it kind of breaks the element. But, uh, that's aside the point. Let's just go ahead and listen to this. まだまだ
believe that was the first reference of Phi that we saw within the game, but then we literally hear its voice within a different memory, and then we hear it in the Trial of the Sword, so yeah, that just straight up made us know that Phi, uh, you know, still does, its spirit still resonates within the sword and all of that, and uh, it was just cool to get the reference. I mean, at first it was very vague from what Zelda says, if, you know, you could still hear the ancient voice within the sword, but then actually hearing the sound effect that Phi made within Skyward Sword, yeah, it, I was so hyped when I saw that the first time, and then seeing it in the Trial of the Sword, I like how they're referencing it, and I mean, me being a huge fan of um, Skyward Sword, uh, story at least, I like how it's referenced more within this game, and I really hope that, you know, the Zelda series continues to, you know, establish this whole thing that they did within Skyward Sword with, um, you know, like the goddess statue and pretty much like how the lore has pretty much started from Skyward Sword and it really shows within Breath of the Wild in particular, unlike in any other Zelda game, just because obviously Skyward Sword came out uh, like recently compared to all the other Zelda games. So even though Nintendo made up all this on the spot and said it was before every other Zelda game, they didn't get a chance to really show it until now. Um, but I mean, it makes sense, obviously, even though the timeline and everything is supposed to be canon, they're just making things up as they go along. It's obvious that Nintendo never really planned a timeline for this game, and it wasn't until, like, the timeline split and they revealed it with, uh, what, Hyrule Historia was it officially announced, but I doubt they had that in mind when making all the timelines, because uh, there's still a lot of, like, small, you know, plot holes within the game, and, uh, in general, I, like I said, I'm, I'm not one to care too much. I love the lore as is, but it doesn't matter how it connects. As long as it all exists to me, that's cool. That's how I see it. So, yeah. But anyways, yeah, we got the champion's tunic from our very first memory. That's what I was aiming for, and now I'm glad to have it. I'm uh, definitely going to be using it for, at least early on, like I said, I'm going to try to wear different outfits, and overall I have other outfits that I want to wear. I really wish you could dye the champion's tunic. I like, I like the fact that you can't because it stays true to the champion's color blue, but at the same time, I don't know, maybe after beating the game or something, it would have been cool to change things up, but... I don't know. I, I'd say the same for all the amiibo. Would have been cool to uh, dye the amiibo clothing, but you can't do that either. But all right, so we have the champion's tunic. We are now more than ready to, I guess, make our way to Akala. I mean, I don't need to really head there yet, but I kind of want to because after I take on Akala, I plan on heading to Death Mountain. And I feel like it'd be cool to take on that one second because that was the one I took on last within the previous playthrough. And plus, uh, a lot of people are telling me to get Mifa's Grace, but I feel like Mifa's Grace would be a little cheap to have, um, especially when I'm trying to have uh, a little man of hearts. And a lot of people are telling me to stick with it, but I know a lot of you guys also want me just to get hearts and not really worry about dying, because in reality, I could have avoided the majority of my three deaths, at least two of them, I could have avoided them if I had more HP, but... I'm choosing not to, and I'm choosing to keep it challenging, just because I want to. I mean, it's also, like, even though you guys might find it a little more entertaining as well, it's it's more fun for me as well, like, having the challenge. Like, I like having less hearts and knowing that if I mess up a Guardian Parry, I will die. And what's hilarious is that did happen in the last video, and spoilers if you didn't watch, so just watching that, but, um... Yeah, I, I died in the last video from a guardian and because I was trying to parry it. And uh, according to a lot of you guys, they did change something within this game that I had no idea about. And that is the fact that apparently guardians can delay their beam that they shoot. To me, that is something I didn't really expect, but I heard that from a friend. Like a friend of mine told me that. Um, that was added within the game, but I instantly went ahead, opened up master mode, and parried, like, a guardian three times in a row, just to make sure, and it was fine every time. It might have been because it was early on within the game, because I had to, like, boot up this file and whatever, and I don't even think I had the Hylian shield done, um, so, I don't know, maybe that guardian didn't want to trick me, but let me avoid these guys. I want to actually head over to the shrine while I make my way to, um the, you know, Akala, uh, you know, region, but 
as I was saying, yeah. Um, I remember I was told that, you know, it was parried, but it, it never happened to me, and I completely forgot. I thought that was just a rumor, or probably a joke, or something that just isn't true. And then a lot of you guys stated it, and re-watching the footage, it kind of looks like the parry I was trying to, um, obviously land, it was, um... Wasn't really gonna land because the uh, the guardian beam was delayed by like a good second. It like lit up and then before it shot it, it like kind of held the beam for a bit while its eye lit up right before it shot it for a good second. And then I got it, which um yeah was no fun. But alright, let's go ahead and just do this because I want to show off what happens if I attempt to make my way through here with stepping on the flowers. Um, so yeah, this shrine has a little shrine quest to get to. So, yes, doing this will uh, enable the Shrine Quest. I believe if you enter it and exit it, you'll uh, have the Shrine Quest enabled if you don't speak to her. But, as you can see, well, uh, yeah, with Revali's Gale, it was a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake either way, but, um, yeah, I just thought I'd show off the uh, easier way, I guess, to do it. Because we do have Revali's Gale, and I do want to use it to my advantage. Um, especially when it comes to these shrines, because there isn't really much, and it isn't challenging at, at all to do, so might as well just cut out the, you know, meaningless stuff, but okay, let's go ahead and now do this, but as I was saying, so yeah, apparently the, the guardians can delay their parry, and I do believe that's why I died in the last video, so I'm gonna have to be really careful with how the guardians work, I actually want to learn how they work in general, um, when it comes to like shooting the uh, beam and how I should parry it because instead of waiting for the cue where the second its eye lights up I go for it I'm gonna try something a little bit different um, and that is like literally watch it like watch the beam shoot from the guardian and then try to land it usually you have to be a little far away to do that you can't be too close to it but, but I think I'll learn because um, I mean when this game first came out I was terrified to do like normal freaking um you know parries against guardian but then that got super easy for me mainly because i feel like uh, i've gotten used to spamming stuff like that within other games M mainly it being uh, dark souls there's a lot of pairing especially in the first game uh not so much the other two actually i feel like the third one all of the harder mechanics within the original games they've gotten dumbed down especially backstabbing backstabbing is way too easy to do in dark souls and speaking of backstabbing there is a move similar to that in this game and uh let me actually go ahead and do okay i would like to do that and hope this somehow gets closer you know if it doesn't we'll just wait for the other one so that's fine this is probably going to move much quicker than the other one okay and we'll just throw this just in case. Oh, okay, that was really dumb. They're probably not even going to be next to each other. You know what I should do? should probably just make a platform here and then throw what I want when it's ready. Because, yeah, I don't, I'm not really paying attention to what I should be doing right here. But actually, I think we'll, we'll be good. Let's wait. Three, two, one, and detonate. Nice. I wasn't really that close, and that's actually, wait, that's it? I feel like there's a different drifting uh, shrine that is much longer, but is very similar to this one. I don't know why, I felt like there's going to be way more after this, but whatever. Um, these ones don't change at all in terms of, like, master mode, because it's literally the same thing. I really wish the Nintendo did something with the shrines, like, what's the point of playing through the same shrines again in master mode? Like... It really makes the the name Master Mode seem not like just another version of Hero Mode. You thought because they gave it a different name that it would seem different, especially Master. You know, to me that in, it obviously intrigued me a lot. Zelda Master, Master Mode. This is my mode, right? But I'm not really noticing too much of a difference Maybe because I am the Master. I'm kidding. Uh, but okay, let's see. Can I actually step on this hat? No, I couldn't. But at least it will spawn me out of the shrine area. See. Thinking, you know, outside the box. Uh, there you go. It helped me out. But now we can make our way back to Epona. I wonder if I have... Hey, no, I don't. Okay. But a lot of you guys actually have been telling me about great locations for, um, for like, the aggro-type horse. You know, the black-haired horse with the black mane and the, like, white-shaped diamond 
crest type thing. The diamond, not crest, but the diamond shaped thing on its forehead. Um, the, I mean, obviously, since the game is RNG, uh, with, with how the horses work, they can spawn anywhere and everywhere. So you could obviously find the same horse. And a lot of you guys told me of different locations. Uh, I'm going to keep them in mind, but most of them are kind of remote locations. You know, not really nearby an area I plan on heading to at least right now. So um, I'll keep it in mind. But once I do get the travel medallion, I'm not going to give up on finding the horse I'm looking for. And the reason why I don't just, uh, like, let's say, um, I guess head to Tobab Grassland, save and quit, and see if it might spawn in the horse I'm looking for, is because I want to do everything on screen. And um, if I save all recording, that won't be the best of... Uh, deals actually i don't really want to risk it to be honest but i am changing up my recording method once again so uh things are going to be a little bit different this time around you guys won't notice anything but for me it's a huge difference because for once i'm able to listen to the audio live uh without like a two second delay or anything which i've never been able to do playing console games and that is because I updated my Elgato from the Elgato HD60 to the HD60 Pro, which essentially plugs into your computer. Instead of it being a USB port, it actually goes in like an internal graphics card type thing. So, yeah, it's internally into my computer, and it projects everything live feed. So, hopefully this kind of helps in terms of, like getting things to work and overall just like my setup is going to be a lot easier i hope it does work but i uh, i just a little disclaimer just in case something does happen to the footage um at least i mentioned it in the video right but okay so sadly these aren't the horses either um and i'm going to point out why and that is because y yeah the this is not even black haired actually it's brown haired but even if it was black haired it had white uh you know hair on the hooves which the one i'm looking for doesn't and i can assure you that the one I'm looking for does not have that. But okay, which way do I actually want to go? Let me think. I'm trying to figure out which pathway. Like, I don't necessarily want to... Okay, let me just avoid these guys. I don't necessarily want to make my way over to the wetlands yet. I kind of want to avoid that because there's actually something I'm going to be doing, which is really cool. But at the same time, should I just take on the shrine? You know what? No, no. We don't even need to take on that shrine because uh, it just hit me that uh, also... Um, we can uh, easily find that shrine and kind of make our way there from a different angle. But then again, at the same time, having the tower for Zora's Domain will be helpful. So, you know what? I'm indecisive going back and forth, but all right, I, I've come to a plan. We're going to get the, um, the Laneru Tower, and then we're going to continue on north. I'm not going to meet up with Sidon, but the reason why I don't want to meet up with Sidon, for those who have played the game or watched, I guess, my previous playthrough, may know that once you reach, I want to say, Inigo Bridge, or near th those bridges that kind of take you around the Zora River all the way to Zora's Domain, you usually meet up with Sidon. He jumps, you know, off the bridge, introduces himself, all of that stuff. Um, we've done it in our past playthrough. I'm sure if you played the game, you might have done it. I mean, you might have actually skipped it, but he kind of meets you along the way. Uh, throughout your path but believe it or not there is a completely different way to meet up with Sidon and a completely alternative cutscene to the game when it comes to Sidon and um yeah I, I like I discovered this playing on like my a different file just like uh pretty much like I have a different file that I'm gonna try to beat the game um and not do any of the divine beasts in so I can uh pretty much uh get like all of Hyrule Field without uh, any of the red lines that the Divine Beast cause. So if I'm looking for good B-roll, you know, the Divine Beast doesn't ruin the sky for me. And I mentioned that before. To me, that kind of bugs me that you can't get the Divine Beast to like turn that off. Because I hate seeing, especially when you finish all four Divine Beasts, the four like red beacons shooting into, well, not necessarily beacons, but beams shooting into Hyrule Castle ready for, you know, the final battle. But it's like, after you're done with the final battle, why is it still there? It's, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of annoying, but that, that's why I want to do a file where I just kind of do only the shrines and none of the uh, Divine Beasts, which... Uh, yeah, um, but anyways, yeah, so I, I tried it out, and I decided to make my way all the way to, uh, the, 
wait, that was it. I think that's all I need to do. Yeah, okay. Um, I tried to make my way to Zora's Domain without speaking to Sliden at all, and I realized that, yeah, you can actually make your way to Zora's Domain and not encounter Sidon, and then attempt to speak to King, um, I believe, Dorfin, uh, and you'll see what happens. I'll, I'm gonna show it off. We're gonna do it for this playthrough. Sadly, it will be in Japanese. You, what I might do, actually, is before I speak to him, I might save, even though I mentioned beforehand I don't want to save, but I might save and then kind of speak to him in both ways, in a sense. Like, uh, do it in Japanese and then do a bonus version in English if you guys are really interested. Let me know if so, because, I mean, would like to show off that cutscene in English as well, since I haven't yet. But, okay, let's go ahead and do this. Alright, and... Uh, okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and jump down. We should be good because it will fall right in. And just like that, we have done it. Yes, this shrine's very easy to do. And as you can see, I'm ahead of the game. I'm ready just to leave this shrine uh, behind. I like how Link is still doing the swimming animation. That is so funny because obviously, uh, it, it, yeah, I guess it didn't really update his animation. You know, it was still working on getting the water to leave the the room since we solved that puzzle but yeah whatever that's aside the point let's just go ahead and make our way to uh, i don't know if we'll find another tower along the way or not another shrine along the way to the tower but i do want to find at least one more shrine i mean maybe make it four spear orbs so i can get myself more stamina but then again we're gonna find a lot of shrines as well heading to a so it's not that big of a deal probably find one there but either way i do want to kind of look into doing terry town early a lot of you guys have requested that and i'm just gonna go ahead and leave really quickly like this just get these guys to not notice me oh okay you're gonna notice me okay hey opponent let's go whoa okay at least i'm the one who took the hit and not opponent um but yeah let's just leave this place and uh, get going to this tower. This tower is not far away. We have Rivoli's Gale. Every tower is going to be a piece of cake. I'm really <laughs> hyped just to see how to do the towers with Rivoli's Gale. Because I really don't... I, for some reason, I've never uh, focused this much on, like, you know, testing it out. Because every other playthrough, you know, I, I don't think I attempted to get Rivoli's Gale immediately. You know, at least I did some towers early on. Or the majority of them early on without doing a Divine Beast. But now, since we are playing it a lot differently, this is interesting to me. Some people may find it uh, kind of cheap that I'm going to be doing this, but I don't really care. I want to try something new. Um, and plus, at least these ones, they're not hard at all to begin with, so might as well. But okay, so this is where we find our first Zora. As you can see, chilling right here. I'm not in the mood to speak to the Zora, but um, it's going to... Yeah, the Zora is going to pretty much point us to where Sidon is, and I don't really care, to be completely honest with you guys. And either way, I want to have Epona at a perfect spot for me, because this is where the Hinox usually is, and that's pretty much where you can reach with uh, the Laneru Tower. If you jump from there uh, all the way to here, you can actually glide from where Epona is. At least I'm going to attempt to do that to show it off, but... All right, we have arrived, and man, I love seeing Death Mountain also erupting like that. That's another sad thing that, you know, changes. It's so weird. It's like the game, Hyrule definitely looks its best when it's at its worst. When the Divine Beasts are taking over Hyrule, when you see Meadow flying in circles in the sky instead of, uh, you know, landed and resting atop of Rito Village, it's so much better, obviously, when it's... Uh, flying in the sky it looks way cooler same goes for death mountain when you look very far away and you see that you can see rudania just crawling like to me that you, it just it's so much more mystical it adds so much to the game that just happened i wasn't even paying attention i'm too busy talking about how amazing this game is and i just died wow where does this put me i cannot believe that see now I'm starting to understand where some people are coming from in terms of with these little amount of hearts. It's going to be a little dumb sometimes because I'm just going to die from something super meaningless. But whatever, it's a game over. And sadly, uh, okay, you know what? 
at least, at least I learned my lesson. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a different pathway. Or, we'll take the same pathway, but this time with the pony. I wonder if I can rush through this without the person speaking to me. Nope. The game forces you. It's crazy how well I remember this, even though I've only done this, like, once or twice. I know I've done it maybe more than twice. Let's be honest, maybe three or four times now. Because I played it on Wii U, and I'm pretty sure I took this path. I played it, obviously, in the Let's Play, and then I've done... Yeah, I've been playing it pretty much now as well, and I've done like a my own file type of run separately. But um, all right, let's uh, let's let's keep that in mind. Prince Sidon's there. It's not like I tried to just not speak to you whatsoever. But thanks for pointing that out for me. I appreciate it. All right. I mean, it's, I guess it's not that big of a deal. I don't know why I tried to avoid her so much because she's just pointing me to where Sidon is. That's about it. But alright, hopefully opponent will just remain here. I don't know why I even brought opponent any further because I'm realizing now that that's not the best idea. Uh, also, let's uh, let's be careful this time around. I'm going to want to get... I don't even know how. That, I'm not blowing hurt a lot. Like, I did not expect it to do that much damage. Um, uh, that's probably because of the weapon it has. What weapon does it have? Oh, it has a knight's sword, it seems. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and ignore... It, and just go to the shrine. I'd rather grab the shrine first and then... Man, I should have put opponent in a better position. I feel like opponent is actually in a horrible position. But I don't care. Once I get the map for this area, it will be a lot easier. So, we're going to wait for that. But uh, as I was saying, yeah. Okay, ma maybe not this part of Zora's Domain. I'd say maybe Zora's Domain is the only one that you don't notice much of a difference. And... Um, uh, who really cares for the divine beast, um, Varuta? Feels weird to say Ruta because I always want to say Ruto or uh, actually no no Ruto yeah I always want to say Ruto which was the previous sage which has nothing to do actually with it being previous because there are no sages within this game they're champions that's the new thing which I actually like a lot more uh, but anyways the minor test of strength we have to take on and this is gonna be super straightforward I mean we've done so many major tests of strength that yeah when we when we find a minor it's a complete joke plus now I have stasis which we got last time and I was aiming to get stasis as soon as possible pretty much as soon as we talked to Pura I had to get it because now I can just easily you know I can just do this and then all right let's just go ham Oh, whoa, that sent it flying. What? I did not expect it to be like that. All right, whatever. Either way, I don't care for this weapon. I hope it breaks on you. And if it doesn't break on you, whatever, then I'll just take your stuff. Please tell me I actually have enough for the Guardian Sword. No, I don't. I'm really going to need to look into Korok Seeds and head to Korok Forest early on because I don't want to constantly have to swap between my items. It's going to get a little annoying and... Uh, yeah, I might as well get myself a secondary shield. I don't know if this soldier shield is worse or better, but I mean, I just like the way all guardian stuff looks. So I'm going to take the guardian stuff instead. Yeah, the freaking, it's amazing. Like just the way it happens. All of this, like the Sheikah technology is so cool. But um, let's just grab this and now move on. And this is going to be nice, but all right, not bad actually. But um, either way, we have the the great eagle bow. I always want to say falcon bow because I can't help but think of uh, Falco Lombardi from uh, Smash. Or no, see, wow, I'm now I'm saying that no from Star Fox, also from Smash. I guess you could say. And when I think of um, you know the the champion Rivali, I think of Falco a lot. So I end up wanting to say Falcon Bow instead of Eagle Bow, but whatever. Um, either way, yeah, they do look a lot similar. They are very alike with the sense of, you know, Falco being very cocky and, you know, not the best towards Star Fox. And then same goes with Link and, and Rivali's relationship. A lot of people, I mean, since, the be since Rivali was first revealed way back before this game was even... Um, you know, much of it was shown. We were still figuring out the champions and what their names were. People already were making the joke of Falco. So that's before his personality was really revealed, which I find freaking hilarious. But, okay, no, okay, let's not do this stinking crap right now. 
I don't need a struggle trying to head up here when it shouldn't be too difficult. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be raining a lot, actually, so it is going to be really difficult. You know what? Let's just go ahead. And uh, I'm thinking of using... You know, let's just do it. We have two of these, and there's no way it's going to be that difficult after the, using the first one. Oh, but it might, because it is still raining. Okay, let's go ahead and just make our way over here and continue heading up. Uh-oh. Enemies! Uh, don't hit me! Okay. <laughs> that was close. But now I'm stuck. Uh-oh. So much for Raleigh's Gale helping me get through all of this. I mean, at least we made it to the very top and avoided a majority of the enemies. Uh-oh. Crap. No, 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 no. No, not you right now. Okay, this is not good. Wow. This is not good at all. I did really dislike the rain here. Please tell me it will stop raining soon. No, Link. Okay, whatever. It will eventually stop, right? Yeah, okay. It does. It doesn't rain literally where the tower is, luckily. So we were able to make it to Lanayru Tower quick. And we have two stamina gauges, so this is going to be super straightforward. Check this out. Okay, well, not as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. But it's still going to be a lot easier. Even with, with that Revali's Gale, it's still easier than normal because I'm used to doing these with uh, just one stamina gauge. So as you can see, yeah, two, so much nicer. But if I do fail or lose stamina trying to do this, I will die and that will result into a game over. So let me be a little careful, especially since we've managed to die from one of these before. But All right, we should be able to reach the top now. Nice. And actually, I want to see this. Check this out. So this is all the rain that's happening around Lanayru because of the Divine Beast, uh, Ruta. Yeah, Ruta is the only one that I would say doesn't look good before. But once you, you know, appease the beast, it looks good after. But um, I guess, yeah, it's just the the other ones. I mean, you could, um, you could argue, I guess, Naboris because... Naboris causes a sandstorm in Gerudo, but seeing Naboris's feet within the sandstorm and overall seeing that presence in Gerudo, I think to me it's better. I would prefer it. Um, so yeah, I, I, and just in general, I prefer all of the Divine Beasts to still be active within Hyrule Field and overall than having them, uh, you know, not active and on our side ready to uh, attack inside Hyrule Castle. But, alright, there we go. Sadly, another death. It looks like the deaths are going to be more common as we progress within the map. And as enemies are going to naturally have stronger weapons. And, I mean, I'm naturally going to fail. I mean, I'm only human. So, yeah, a small mistake will result into a game over, sadly. But, uh, we will manage. And Wait, can we see a rainbow, kind of, sort of, in the light? That's Wait, I don't understand how or what. But the lighting was so weird for a second. All right, whatever. Let's just keep going. Yeah, it looks like a giant storm behind us. Technically is, I guess, but... That's aside the point. I mean, I'm not here to even mess with them. I'm actually here to make my way completely elsewhere. So, let's go ahead and try to land on a opponent. You know what? Let's not do it like that. That'd be way too risky. Uh, <laughs> like, I could have tried to, like, land... Because if you do land on your horse, you won't take the fall damage, I'm pretty sure. But just trying to do that does not seem that easy. But okay, so I do believe this is the pathway we should take. So I guess we should continue through here. Kind of make our way around the Murkay Island slash Phantom Hourglass Island type areas. Which, yeah, if you do pay attention, Linebeck Island, Murkay Island, freaking Zaz's Island, uh, Gopunga Island or whatever. Which I, isn't, is that from Phantom Hourglass? I know it's from a Zelda game, but I can't think if it is from Phantom Hourglass. Regardless, oh, not you again. Okay. This is a different Zora, isn't it? But yeah, once again, they're going to go ahead and tell us about Slide. And see, this, this is why I originally thought the game really, really wanted you to take on Zora's Domain first. Even though it's open world and you'll find your own adventure, uh, it kind of holds your hand until you reach Zora's Domain. And Sidon is definitely the most, you know, helpful of the four uh, companions you meet within the game. Um, so yeah, definitely feel plus with how cold Zora's Domain is to where Impa is and how you're forced to, or not forced, but told to head to Impa. It just all adds up to seeming that 
yeah, Zora's Domain would be the first uh, area to kind of explore, and getting Mufa's Graves would be the first. But uh, if you think about difficulty-wise, like, Meadow and Wind Blight Ganon is so much easier than uh, Water Blight and the Divine Beast, um, freaking Ruta. I don't know why, for some reason, very slow thinking of what I'm trying to say today, but I do apologize for that. Um, either way, I've been, I've been trying my best just to get, like, recording things, like, working, because when you have a project going on and then everything kind of doesn't work at the same time it sucks because it's like you still want to stay consistent i've been doing my best to do so so yeah for those who are wondering why videos haven't been daily or haven't been as active well yeah please understand i'm doing my best to do so it's just um things don't always work out but i make the best of it to say the least like um Hopefully with this new capture card and my new setup and everything, things will be good. But I said that last time and, you know, that wasn't the case. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, let's just continue down this pathway. So, I do believe it might split up or... Is this the pathway that splits up into... A, yeah, it does. Okay. Akala or Death Mountain. Now, we're going to go ahead and kind of make our way... Okay, thank God that traveler didn't spoke, speak to us. We're going to make our way kind of to Death Mountain. I'm not going to start it yet, but I want to get that shrine. And then from there, we're going to attempt to get the Akala Tower and stuff. And whoa! What? I wasn't even looking at the screen. I did not think it would jump at me. Out of Was it even aiming for me? It wasn't even aiming for me. There is no way that... See, now I'm just dying from any random hit left or right because these enemies... You should naturally do more than four stinking hearts. I really need yellow hearts, if anything. Like, instead of rushing normal hearts, let me rush some yellow hearts. I think I have some hearty food on me, but jeez, man. That is so uncool. Okay. That is... I'm not... I'm honestly not happy with this, so... You're going to die. I'm going to redeem my friend and my life. Okay, there you go. Let's pick up everything you dropped. And also... Okay, well, you're passed out, so you're probably not going to get up. And even if you do get up, you're not going to give me crap. Sadly, okay, she is getting up. But she's probably not going to give me anything. So, you okay? <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, I never saw them coming. Okay. Oh, that's sad. She's a ship set. But at least you're good now. I mean, I also died. I, I wonder if like Link's death is the same. You know, he just gets dizzy and then gets back up or something. Probably not. We, we literally got a game over. If this, if this was meant to be canon, this is where Link's adventure would have ended, sadly. But what's a wizard of doing so close to a um, stable? It's funny because I feel like I was acting pretty cocky in the beginning of this video. Being like, ah, Master Mode is not showing much. And here I am dying from anything left and right. So I do deserve that. <laughs> But okay, let's go ahead and see if we're sitting on... Okay, one hearty item. Screw it. Let's uh, cook it. Uh, that is horrible. Okay, let's cook. Um, I don't know if cooking all of these at once will do it. But you know what? Let's just do it. I'm going to mix them all. All hearty items. Usually if you do the same hearty item, like a bunch of big hearty radishes, it should do good. Okay, that's... That kind of did what I was hoping for, which is plus 14. Um, I'm going to eat it now and see how it slowly depletes my HP. Because, uh, yeah, we'll see how much the enemies truly do. <laughs> uh, I definitely need more yellow hearts on me, to say the least. And, um, yeah, we're going to look for a lot more hearty food. So, yeah, but with the more hearty food you mix, the more yellow hearts you'll end up getting. Personally, I feel bad doing that because I'm used to having way more hearts. But... It's a different game now, so I gotta use more hearty food for the temporary buff it gives you, rather than the, you know, actual healing effect, which is always a full restore. So even using one would be our full restore, but what's a full restore when you only have four hearts? Any item, I could use three apple or four apples, and there we go, it's a full restore to me. Uh, with how little HP I have, but okay. So, let us begin, whoa. I'm really curious. Okay, so do I just hit this and then... 
I guess I'm supposed to grab this. There's a chest over there, but I doubt it's anything important. Mainly when I have a lot of items on me, I'm just not gonna bother with that. Uh, okay. There you go. That goes by, and now let's go ahead and do this. Ugh. Push it forward. Ugh, I gotta push with all my strength. <laughs> it's so freaking weird. Okay, now if, it, if everything goes backwards, I'm screwed. But I just need to keep going. There we go. We got it. Don't stop, Link. I'm, I'm not entirely sure if this is how you're supposed to do it, but it works. As you can see, we no longer need this ball. All the balls are resting right by the shrine, even though it disappears the second you interact with the monk. But, all right, there we go. So we got ourselves another shrine. Sadly, I can't upgrade anything for stamina yet because there is no goddess statue. It would have been nice to have, like, a goddess statue or a very small mini one that you can use at every stable. I don't know why they didn't do that and they only had them in major towns. Um, I, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, though there are other goddess statues, uh, them being in the, um, the, temp the power temple of power, or what is it? Spring of power, spring of wisdom, and spring of courage. There are obviously the giant ones. There's one in the temple of time. There's one in the very ancient temple. You know, the forgotten temple as we know. Um, so at least there's a couple outside of towns. But still, it would have been nice to also have them in uh, stables. Honestly, anything, any of my input is kind of just like, I'm like nitpicking. I will definitely make a... Uh, like remastered review on like my opinions of the game but I feel like I still can't make it yet uh, because we don't have everything within this game out yet once the final set of DLC comes out which it should be the uh, champions ballad that is if no, I don't I don't think Nintendo's gonna announce anything after that and it's gonna come out very late within the year so once that does come out though uh, yeah that will definitely be my focus when we finish that and everything then I'll feel like I have officially beaten Breath of the Wild entirely and I can uh, officially I like, give you guys my opinion so that's gonna be like something I want to do definitely in the future and try out but we'll see when the time comes when the remaining of this game truly uh, you know is out for us to play because right now all we have is a piece of that um, You know additional content, but I'm pretty sure after champions valid the game will be done with Nintendo won't really be doing any more updates for unless it's like anything game breaking but with the game being out for like over a year I doubt they'll find anything game breaking the only game breaking glitch we had that I feel like you can accidentally get into and not come out of is the um you know, final boss, escaping the out of bounds section, and not and saving outside of it. But okay, so down there I believe is the shadow pass or something. I'm actually curious, let me start reading these. Um, I should read these more often and kind of, you know, act like a traveler myself. So it just tells you South Lake, okay, never mind. In the South Lake stable. I'm heading to the tower mainly, so it doesn't really matter which way I kind of take. Uh, well, this way is actually more important for the tower. But, okay. Some enemies, not going to bother with them yet. More enemies, probably not going to bother. Oh, whoa. You can literally see the silhouette of it from, yeah, from the back. It is, it's crazy how it moves real time. Like I said, to me, that's just such an awesome thing. And it sucks that you end up removing that within the game. I wish Rudania always did that. Um, but whatever. Let's just go ahead and make it right here. Uh, you know, I'm not going to speak to this guy yet. I do like, when you do speak to this guy, he gives you a little info about the Akala Tower, but I kind of want to activate the tower before I speak to him, so I can see it in blue when the camera pans to it. And what the heck, the way that enemy was running was so uncool, because it looked terrifying. Okay, opponent, peace. We're, I'm leaving. You chill down here. You'll be fine. Alright. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Okay, we're, we're fine because that's what I'm gonna do. You just drop down and then wait it out until it leaves and then keep going. Alright, we have Revali's Gill, so once we actually reach the tower, it's gonna be a piece of cake. But maybe heading up here, we're gonna have to be a little careful in terms of. Oh, I was trying to do this, but Link had to have the wrong thing out. Jeez. Okay, there we go. That's dead. <laughs> Man, that's so dumb that I got hit. Imagine if I didn't have yellow hearts and I would have died again over such a dumb mistake. 
I was, I was literally gonna switch out to this, but if you have you have the wrong one, uh, it's no good. But okay, uh oh. Wait, what? Okay, okay. Wait. Oh no. Whoa, oh no. Okay, crap. This is so bad. Wait, it's okay. I was hoping it would give up on me, but now it will. Hopefully, yes. Ah, we have no more yellow hearts. We used them all. I don't even know where that thing found me, but it somehow did. Okay. <laughs> Let's just continue up here. We'll be fine. You know, I'm gonna make sure nothing else hits me, because if I do get hit, I mean, it's, it's a straight up game over. Okay, wait, what? No! Are you kidding me? Okay. Link, start climbing. Okay, or, or rest. All right. Phew. All right, rest right here. Luckily, Link can rest. I don't even know that was possible, but I don't know how these guardians are popping all over the place. All right. You stand still. I'm running. Peace. Actually, this is my chance. Oh, let's go. This is so risky. Okay. Let's get out of here. Phew. This stuff is insane. This is why I'm playing with so little hearts. So, so I have to be this careful. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, this is going to be really dumb. I can't believe I'm going to do this. Uh, okay. We made it. Phew. Because, yeah. Landing in that as well. The malice. No good. But okay. Okay. Yes. Don't hit me. This guy needs to die now. Oh, you. All right. One touch from that, and it would have been an instant death, too. So, luckily, we managed to get rid of that dude. Sadly, I need to get rid of this. Take his night sword. And now, let's go ahead and claim the tower for ourselves. Yes. We can easily do it like this. Uh, please tell me I'm going to arrive to the top. Yes. Okay, we did it. Nice. And there we go, my friends. We actually managed to take two towers on. Uh, I mean, I, I want to say with these. We didn't try too much with the second one, but um, we did die the first one. I mean, the second one was challenging as well, this one. But at least we didn't die is what I'm trying to get at. I, I felt like we were more likely to die to this one than any other one. But there we go. All right, I'm done. Let's go ahead, scan the area, get the map for Akala, and try to at least reach a stable. My goal here in Akala, because you may be wondering, there's no Divine Beast. There's not really that many shrines, but I, I want to reach Robbie and uh, just overall make my way to the uh, Lome Labyrinth, because that's where the Travel Medallion is. And this early on within the game, the Travel Medallion is going to be super helpful. Um... It is not helpful at all when you have every single shrine complete within the game. And sadly, in my other playthrough, which we've gotten the Travel Medallion for, I do have every single shrine completed. So, yeah, I don't see a point, being completely honest, to, um... Let's go ahead and eat this. But yeah, a point to, uh... To, like, wait for it. I want to get it as soon as possible and really make use of the Travel Medallion and actually see how useful it can be now that we are going to be getting it a bit early. But, okay. So, I don't know why this enemy runs so weirdly. Like, the uh, the Black Baku Blend, like, the way it just moves its hands and flails like that is uh, hilarious. But also weird because, like, is it trying to attack me or is it running away from me? You can't really tell. But, all right. Akala, definitely one of the cooler areas within the... Uh, one of my favorite areas in terms of, like, wanting to learn more about the lore. Uh, as mentioned before, it reminds me a lot of the Ikana area from um, Majora's Mask, which also was, you know, kind of like its own place, a civilized area that was broke down by the time you arrived within the game. Though Ikana was a kingdom and had a lot to it. And, uh... Yeah, it would be definitely nice to learn a lot more about that lore. But I really hope, since this game is very new, and, like, if they do make some sort of prequel to this game, that this tower, everything, not the Sheikah Tower, of course, but the ta this tower itself, all of this, will be living, breathing, people will be in it or out of it. Um, you know, we can see how Akala once was as, like, a smaller faction to what Hyrule Castle was, because I'm assuming that's what Akala was. It was a smaller, like just facility or like area um especially with the military 
Um, even they had like cannons and stuff and they were ready for war against the calamity, but did not stand a chance. I believe we can even find like the battlefield where all the guardians died. It's so cool to see all of that, everything that took place a hundred years ago. Um, the question is, will we, will we be able to like relive it or live it to begin with in a, uh, you know, future game? I don't know. I hope so. But uh, we don't really know to be honest. I mean, I, that's usually what I hope for for the next Zelda game. But yeah, we'll we'll see what Nintendo has to offer. I, honestly, so far I'm enjoying every single new like uh, style of oh crap, uh, like style of game Nintendo has released. The only one I've had major issues was Scarred Sword, but I enjoyed its story. It was just literally the uh, what is here? What am I doing here? By the way, is there a chest I'm supposed to get from here? Or do I get it from here? Okay, I don't need to get that chest. I'm not gonna waste my time getting that chest to begin with. We're just gonna go ahead and solve this. So, um, let me go ahead and just move all of the balls up. And then, now that we have these two in place, we just need to move this down and then move this. Okay, I got this, trust me. <laughs> May look like I'm slight. You know what? I got a better idea. Let's just do this. There we go. And now, perfect. Okay. So, let this kind of roll, let this kind of up, let it fall, but then I'll also let it go. Ah, uh, come on. Can I do this? <sighs> I just need to get the middle one in. This is supposed to be easy, and to me, it usually is. Okay, there we go. I think we got it. So, perfect, right? No! No, wait. Okay. And now. Who? No, wait. Oh, jeez. Okay, I'm rolling it too much. You know what? Screw it. Let's start from the, let's start from the beginning. I'm just going to start from the very beginning. I, uh, the motion controls are easy to do, but I can't get one ball where I want it to go. Like, it's accurate to what I'm trying to do. I'm just messing it up slightly by moving things too quickly. Okay. Let's just do this. And then move the freaking there we go okay i got it just like this and then you know what there we go i'm just gonna move this all the way over here move this, this is so annoying now oh man okay you know what screw this let's just do it one more time from the top Okay. Wow, it was so much easier the last time. I was honestly saying, what is wrong with me? Like, there's no way that was that difficult. And it wasn't. It, I just had a little hard time getting the balls where I wanted. They were all kind of scattered. And when you try to, you know, recenter all three of them in different areas, yeah, not that easy because they end up all wanting to go in the same place. But you know what? We did it. So who cares? We'll move on now. Now that we have this shrine, um, we can teleport here anytime. I'm not really going to be teleporting here per se, but I'm glad I have it. And plus, another one off the checklist, you know. We are currently at 26 shrines, so I believe... Let me think, actually. Uh, we have... Because we got an extra heart container, so if I do the math, uh, we literally need probably... Um, how many... Like, I guess, shrine-wise or spirit orb-wise, we are going to need, I guess... Like another, maybe, uh, I don't actually know, like, to get the, because I, I want to know exactly how much I'm going to need for the Master Sword, um, but, like, thinking about it exactly, since we did get one extra heart piece, I can't actually swap that uh, as a Spear Orb, it would be nice if I could, but I can't, so pretty much I'm going to convert all the stamina that we currently have, uh, which, uh, yeah, we'll only need, I believe, like, two full rows and, um almost another complete row like the third one almost complete we're gonna have to complete it all the way since we did get an additional extra heart from the um divine beast meadow so i think we're good overall but um yeah we, we have a couple more shrines to go to say the least um like let's say probably within an episode or two if we keep doing as many shrines as we have been doing we'll have enough to get the master sword which is going to be my goal so yeah we're really close to the master sword to say the least literally just like 
around freaking 10-ish more shrines and we'll have probably even more than enough but that will give us a good amount of spirit orbs but anyways I'm probably not going to use any of the, the, my remaining spear orbs. We might just remain, uh, stay with just two and keep the remaining ones so I don't have to convert so much into um, heart containers from stamina to heart containers. So yeah, we're probably just going to leave our stamina as is. Plus with Trevally's Gale, we don't really need it too much. But what is that? Oh, that's the moon. Looked really weird for some reason. But anyways, it's gloomy. It's dark. Um, I guess we're going to end off the video here. We didn't do too much. We just kind of explored a little. We got the champion's tunic as well as uh, opened up some of the map. But next time, we're definitely going to follow one of these pathways all the way to Robbie's uh, place where yeah, we'll be able to meet up with him and then get the travel medallion. And from there, uh, my goal will be to find aggro as soon as possible. We're going to find that black haired Horus and tame it. And hopefully we'll have better stats than opponent. Because at least the ones I found have better stats. But it might not. But my goal is to find one with better stats. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Master Mode. I apologize for the longish outros. But uh, yeah, uh, bear with me I guess. Just getting back to this type of stuff. And you know, overall just trying to get back into the groove of uploading and everything. Just been having technical difficulties. But things should get better um anyways again thanks for watching i've been zelda master and uh yeah let me know if there's anything in particular you'd want me to just see you'd want to see me do in the next video uh always down for suggestions again thanks again for watching i'll see you all in the next one bye